Imagine you're a farmer in the West Nile region of northern Uganda. Your family depends on agriculture for food and income. However, due to climate change and inconsistent rainfall patterns, your farm can no longer provide your family's needs. As a smart farmer, you consider starting an alternative business, but you have no savings and you're not credit worthy. So you end up stuck in a cycle of poverty and your family is forced to live on less than $1 a day. That's where the Village Egg Bank project comes in. We give you a loan, not of cash, but of resources, infrastructure, and skills to start poultry farming. We then market and sell your eggs to hotels, restaurants, and retailers in the region. The profits from egg sales are divided in three ways. First, we give you a portion for daily household use, that's income. We take a second portion back to recover the initial investment made in you. And the third portion of the profits is held in a savings account for your household. That savings account holds a pool of funds from all the farmers in the system. And because you're now credit worthy with us, you can access this pool of funds whenever you need money to go do something productive like start a new business or pay your children's school fees or pay for medical expenses. And that's the real value of the Village Egg Bank project. We create financial stability by providing daily household income and provide financial security by enabling rural farmers to save in material currency. So that's the problem we're trying to solve and that's how we're trying to solve it. We're currently um, finishing up a prototype of this project, of this model, with 35 farmers across nine villages in the West Nile region in northern Uganda. And while we've managed to successfully build a functional system, the truth is we're neither profitable nor sustainable. Currently with the $36,000 we got from RAN, we've been able to build a system that's going to generate about $242 from egg sales after one year. Obviously, that's not enough to cover operating costs and then more importantly, to help households to live on more than one um, dollar a day, right? So this is a problem. And to resolve this problem, we have developed a plan for sustainability that involves increasing the size of production. We want to do a few things. First, we want to increase the number of farmers from 35 to 200. Then we want to increase the number of chickens per farmer from 10 to, um, that's 50, to 50. So that, that enlarges the system and takes us from 35 farmers with 350 birds to 200 farmers with 10,000 birds. Now what does this mean in terms of money? We estimate that it's going to cost us about $238,324 to um, reach this threshold, right? And then after X sales, when we, when we invest this amount of money and get to those numbers, X sales from one year is supposed to, or is expected to generate $249,000 $455 after one year. That's $11,000 in profit. That's enough to cover operating costs and then help households live on up to $3.6 a day. That's a 20% increase in their um, standard of living, how much they have. Further down the line, we'd also like to tap into the larger value chain of poultry production, produce our own feed to decrease costs, um, establish a demo site so that we can centralize our trainings, um, and then raise and sell chickens for profit. And we expect that adding value in these ways will make us more and more profitable as the years go by. And again, to remind you, um, what we intend to do in the short term is to increase our size of production, and we estimate that it's going to cost us this amount of money. Now, while we talk about profitability and sustainability, I think it's important to remember why we're doing this in the first place. We're trying to help people like Abibu, who wants to use the money to pay school fees for her three children. She wants to buy iron sheets to roof her house. She wants to buy animals for farming. We're helping people like Naima. She wants to pay school fees as well. She wants to feed her family to prevent malnutrition, which we all know is bad. Uh, OK. And then she wants to venture into commercial farming. And Naima has these same goals. Thank you. What kind of chickens are you uh, Are these local chickens or, um, you know? Uh, and, and the reason why I'm asking is because uh, there is potential 
for the project to increase sales if you sell something organic. I mean, people prefer the local chickens to you know these others that are fed you know with different things and you know, treatments and everything. And and then for that reason, what what kind of technologies are we using? Because one of the biggest costs in in the Brazilian chickens is feeding. Uh, what have you discovered anything that you can use given the environment where you're working so that you can be able to raise these chickens uh, in a way that brings the costs really down, even the nature of, of the people that you're trying to help? Do you want to change Yeah, I just want to know the new thing because you know we have been with chickens for quite some time. So when, when I hear a story of chicken, I, I, I'm, I'm always interested in knowing what is something different that you're doing. Feeding, what, housing, whatever. How are you doing it differently? Thank you very much. I think this is a very good model for uplifting uh, rural farming communities. Thank you for innovating the system. Um, uh, just a comment, the key to sustaining and uh, growing such a system is management. You need a very strong management team to ensure that this is done and uh, grows effectively. Um, the second thing may be, uh, just a comment also, consider insurance. Chicken is a very uh, risky business as far as uh, 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 in them as a business to concern. So consider tying this up with some, to some kind of uh, other business insurance, which is now available. This will also uh, help you in sustainability. Thank you. Uh, the solution in its steady state is understandable, but it's not clear as to what your offering is and how it's your, your go-to-market strategy. What is the service that you're offering and for what price at the, at the onset? Um, so I'll start with the kind of chickens we're using. We're using Corella birds um, because they have been shown to do very well in the region we're working give us maximum number of eggs, and as they age, they're also very good for meat. So that allows us to sort of have a value chain um, with, you know, to do more with the chickens over time. Um, I'll let someone else answer the feed thing. Um, we are exploring using local material to produce uh, feeds that are at low cost. And as a business for, from the management side, that's where we want to produce the low-cost uh, feeds and give them to the farmers instead of buying the ones in the market. Um, what is the service? The core thing here is making those who feel they have nothing to save have something to save and still change their lives. Yet we can also sustain it by selling products to them. The farmers will be a market for the project team who are going to sell products to them. And whatever we give to a farmer is a cover because there's a grand cover process. Um, insurance, we shall pursue that, but at the local level, we are trying to consider either one or two eggs per day from the farmer's health insurance for small dangers that are happening along that line. Uh, for management issues, we know we have been staying with chickens for a very long time. And the productivity is low because of management issues. So we would like to improve management. You saw a structure, a house that we are building, and we want to see how it will improve feeding and good housing, how that will lead into better productivity in the chicken. 